Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the December 18th, 2018 School Board of Seminole County School Board meeting. At this point in time, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Williams to introduce our invoker for the evening. Good evening. I would like to introduce to you Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Claymer Revis. Claymer is a senior and currently the Husky Battalion Commander of Haggerty High School's Army JROTC. Born originally in Nicaragua, she went through a period of foster care before becoming part of Officer Edward Hanau, a former Air Force soldier. I think he's right out here, right? Yes, thank you. And his wife, Mrs. Patricia Hanau, and their foster family who have raised her. Is mom out there too? Yes. Okay. Uh, the family's strong core values anchored her faith in God, honoring her parents, respecting herself, rules of law, and recognizing that hard work and academic excellence will lead to great outcomes as she matures. Per Cadet Rivas's comments to both First Sergeant Jose Vasquez and Colonel Wimbish, who are over here on my left. Dealing with hard times in life, but continuing to move forward and not giving up has helped me grow as a person and accept myself as who I want to be. With her family's encouragement and the guidance of instructors and counselors along the way, the Haggerty High School JROTC has instilled in her a motivation to become a better citizen and person. Her plans are to go to college and like her mother, would like to go into social work. Introducing to you, Clay Marivas. Good afternoon, can you guys hear me? Okay. Uh -huh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Clay Marivas, the battalion commander of the Haggerty High School JROTC program. And this evening, I'll be speaking to you about why I believe JROTC is a great program for developing citizenship. I originally joined the JROTC program back in middle school. As a member of a military family, I wanted to understand what it was all really about. I quickly fell in love with the program, but it wasn't until high school that I really got to understand what it was all about. Entering high school was a difficult transition for everyone, but my case was just a bit unusual. Halfway through my eighth grade year, I entered the foster system and started living with my current family. On top of dealing with the normal fears of, of starting the last chapter of your adulthood, before adulthood, I was dealing with a lot of emotional fear and worry at home. JRTC became my place of comfort and happiness. I loved going to the class every day. I appreciated experiencing a non-traditional classroom setting where everyone is encouraged to participate and is always praised for their achievements. I enjoyed learning things that are not commonly taught in school, such as land navigation, drill, courtesies and customs, and as well as how everyone's personality can better a team, and of course, the big one, how to be a leader and how to be a great citizen. Leadership is critical to becoming a productive citizen in that you must demonstrate and guide others to embody the qualities of citizenship, loyalty to country, believing in American ideals, pursuing cr and creating equal opportunities for all, and taking care of your fellow man. JRTC's motto is to motivate young people to become better citizens. I believe that through my progression in the program, I have acquired invaluable skills to embody these principles. I have discovered who I am as a person, honest, moral, and dedicated. Every student should be open to this opportunity as well. It is important that all students understand what it truly means to be an American and to pursue the American dream. I believe that JRTC has created this platform to learn Act upon and act upon the principles of citizenship to become a truly productive and well-rounded member of the society, and they should all be encouraged to join. Thank you for your time. Thank you. If you could join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. 
Thank you so much for sharing. Ms. Pinnock, I know you had a comment. Ms. Chairman, if I can have just a moment, please. Ms. Rivas' parents are in the room, and I would just like to take a moment to recognize Dad um, Edward, who is an SRO at Jackson Heights, and Mom Patricia, who is a social worker here in our, in our um, ESC building. Thank you for uh, the model citizens that you are, and um, I had the great opportunity of meeting this family when the Haggerty JROTC presented gold star pins to Gary Sinise Foundation at an event a couple weeks ago. And um, thank you for what you do for our community, for our children, and for what you have done to this lovely woman. Let the record reflect that all school board members are in attendance in addition to the superintendent and our school board attorney. I have some acknowledgments to make this evening. Miss Tina McClory from Goldsboro Elementary School, SICA Vice President, welcome. Dawn Blue, Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. Matt Weber with our Business Advisory Board. McKenna Christie, Jason Christie, Anthony Singletary, Henna Dobshi, David Ziegler, all with Crooms Academy of Information Technology Student Government representatives. Thank you for being here, Crooms. And Polly DeLucia from Seminole County Council PTA President. Thanks, Polly, for always being here to support. Dr. Griffin, do you have any agenda modifications? There are two, Madam Chair. The first is the addendum for good cause is marked on our electronic agenda by a green flag named addendum item. And the second is I would like to add 3C and this is gonna be um, a Lake Brantley update by Captain Francis. Thank you. School board members, do you have any items for removal or clarifying questions? Ms. Almond? Comments on 4.0 and 4.P, like Paul. Anyone else? Okay, and I would like to make a comment on 4.L. 4N, 4O, 4P, and 4Q. Seeing that, do we have approval of the agenda outline? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Unanimously. Dr. Griffin, we have some presentations this evening. We have many. It's the last board meeting of 2018. We know what that means. Celebrate good times. Dr. Griffin and board members, it's my pleasure tonight to introduce our veteran of the month, Paul Elliott Perry. Paul is a humble and proud man that grew up within a patriotic Navy family. Paul Elliott Perry is better known as Pepe. As many high school seniors did during the late 1960s and early 1970s, Pep signed up for the selective service. He chose the Navy as both his mother and father served proudly during World War II and the Korean Wars. He was sworn in to the Navy in 1971 by his father, Lieutenant Commander V.P. Perry. While in the Navy, he attended boot camp at Great Lakes and attended aviation school in Memphis, Tennessee. Pepe is very proud of his training and assignment as AD ADJ aviation jet mechanic assigned to the helicopter anti-submarine squadron. Pepe worked on Sikorsky helicopters, plane captain for the SH-3 power plant and additional jet engines. Before receiving his honorable discharge, he became a plane captain instructor, providing training on flight line operations, carrier deck operations, search and rescue, and fleet operations. His accommodations that he will not speak of are the National Defense Ribbon, Vietnam Service Ribbon, and accommodations for actions. Mr. Perry had his own mechanic business when he started working with Seminole County Public Schools as an OPS mechanic in 1986 and 1987. He assisted during the midnight shift. The transportation facility was located on General Hutchinson. In October of 1988, he was hired full-time as a mechanic. 
Over the years, he also worked as a part, parts clerk mechanic. When Winter Springs High School was built, management was searching for someone to teach diesel mechanics. He eagerly accepted the position of diesel mechanic instructor as part of the inaugural years and continued teaching for five years. He also continued working at, at transportation. He found teaching to be challenging and rewarding. His wife, who is with us tonight, and his wife is Jackie, I think she's over on the other side of the board room. Hello, Jackie said that he learned as much as he taught. His duties included maintenance and repair of school buses and all systems. This included electrical, hydraulic, and air systems. Pepe is known around the shop as the fabricator and welder. If he couldn't find the correct tool, he just made one. He was also instrumental with the development of the SCPS tow truck for transportation. While with the fire departments, Pepe provided, Pep provided training for extrication and recovery mass casualty drills, and incident command mass casualty training, MCI. Pepe also assisted during multiple local disasters, including the 1998 wildfires, the 2004 and 2005 hurricane activations. At this point, I'm going to turn this over to risk manager Ralph Caravello, who has some additional information to share about Paul Pepe Perry. Good evening. On the morning of November 26, 2018, a tragic accident occurred at the Transportation Bus Depot in Winter Springs. A member of Seminole County Public Schools was seriously injured. Upon being alerted of this crisis, Mr. Perry sprang to action and rushed to the side of our injured employee and provided vital emergency first aid care. Paul remained at our employee's side until EMS arrived. <clears throat> Mr. Perry's professionalism and courage during this crisis is commendable. Mr. Perry, thank you for your service to our great nation and thank you for answering the call for one of our own. Dr. Griffin and board members, we have several Seminole County High School athletic teams that we are going to recognize now for outstanding seasons during our fall sports seasons. First, from Lake Mary High School, the state championship girls golf team. Come on down, ladies. Congratulations to this state champion 3A girls golf team from Lake Mary. After two days of competition against some of the best teams in Florida, the Lady Rams dominated and won their fourth straight, yes, fourth straight consecutive state title. Day one, they shot a five over, but then came out on day two and won by 26 strokes. Winning four consecutive team championships is a feat that has not been accomplished in the past 33 years. They are freshman Serena Lee, freshman Izzy Pilat, who was also third overall and first team All-State. Freshman Caroline Tuttle, who was also first overall and All-State. Sophomore Maddie Staub, sophomore Darby Nuxel, junior Gabby Peristein, junior Alyssa McCarta, who was uh, second team All-State, and senior Kayla Lee, and of course, up here many times before is their coach, Dennis Burchill. Here tonight in the audience, I believe assistant, uh, our athletic director, Doug Peters, and principal, Dr. Mickey Reynolds. Congratulations, four in a row. Also being recognized tonight, some members of the boys' third place state uh, team from Lake Brantley High School in swimming. Come on up, Nate Bocuzzo, state champion in the 100 breaststroke and 400 free relay. John Moncado, senior. He's a senior state champion in the 100 backstroke and 400 free relay. Alice Gutian, a senior state champion in the 400 free relay, runner up in the 200 free relay. Sage Sungild, a freshman state champion in the 400 free relay, runner-up in the 200 free relay. 
Cole Parnell, a junior, state champion or state runner-up in the 500 free, 100 free, and 200 free relay, and Ben Mesa, a senior, state runner-up in the 200 free relay. Of course, their coach, Clay Parnell, athletic director Jerry Kelly, and principal all here tonight, Dr. Trent Daniel. Congratulations to these fine, outstanding young men, the swim team from Lake Brantley High School. Also tonight, we have some outstanding student athletes taking up most of the left side of the room here from Oviedo High School. We're gonna start with the boys bowling. The 2018 Oviedo High School boys bowling team made its second, of, second appearance in a row this year in the FHSAA State Bowling Tournament held at Boardwalk and Baseball. Following a great undefeated performance in conference and district, the boys won their first ever state championship. The Oviedo boys had three team members make an all-conference and won the Kiwa High School Challenge on the September 25th. Congratulations to Brendan Carney, Evan Korn, Brandon Lennon, Jacob Ramos, Daniel Rios, Sean Rogers, Bryson Ruffin, Nicholas Zied, assistant coach Mark Quick, head coach Pat, Pat Costello also here tonight, athletic director Jen Darty, and principal of Oviedo High School, Mr. Joe Tribus. Congratulations, Oviedo Boys Bowling State Champion. Also from Oviedo High School, congratulations to the girls swim team. Runner up in the state. Congratulations, Oviedo Girls Swimming. They are Izzy Bishop, Brooke Brennan, Gabby Cartagena Diaz, Kennedy Cook, Gabby Donahue, Eleanor Duffy, Alexandra Phil, Taylor Floyd, Abigail Gibbons, Sophie Hampson. Jaden Herbert, Michaela Oliv um, Oliva, Oliva, Carly Rose, Ellie Rothfuss, Emma Stewart, Abigail Wydra, Juliana Zerpa, assistant coaches Kristen Lewis and head coach Charlie Rose. Also in the audience again are AD, Jen Darty, and principal Joe Tribus. State runner-ups, girls swimming, the Oviedo Lions. And of course, we all know because the girls were pushing them along the way, we have the boys state championship swim team from Oviedo High School. They are Carter Anderson, Nicholas Barroso, David Carasquillo, Carlos Cartagena Diaz, Andrew Christensen, Brandon Christensen, Neil Dash, Santiago De Stefano, Connor Duncan, Patrick Fry, Ryan Gibbons, Tyler Hanley, Mason Herbert, Joshua Howell, Nicholas Hudinich, Ryan Reynolds, Justin Rockaway, and Rhaegar Reddy. Of course, their coaches are the same. Kristen Lewis and Charlie Rose, and again, A.D. Gendardi and Principal, Mr. Joe Tribus.
also from Oviedo High School, the 2018 girls volleyball team, second state championship. Congratulations, Oviedo girls volleyball. <laughs> Making their third appearance in the title game in six years, finished with a 28 and four record. Recognized on the Max Preps National Tour of Champions for their number eight national ranking. Congratulations to Riley Powers, Lily Gunter, Abigail Mason, Stephanie Gaber, Amanda Lee, Madison Cook, Sydney Gonzalez, Savannah Vock, Madison Salvatorello, Michaela Schultz, si uh, Simone Jackson, assistant coaches Scott Redmond, JC Myers, and Rachel Miracolo, and head coach Jen Darty, of course, principal of Oviedo High School, Mr. Joe Tribus. Congratulations, state champions, Oviedo Girls Volleyball. And our final recognition for the evening from Seminole High School, the state runner-up boys swim team, including these state championships, Noah Evans, 200 medley relay with Skylar Klein, Dawson Joyce, and Peyton Poor. In the 200 freestyle relay, Dawson Joyce, Peyton Poor, Griffin Ciasimino, Andy Rivera Maldonado, the, fi the 50 free, Dawson Joyce, the 100 free Dawson Choice State Champions. Also on the team for the state runner-up, Jacob Hall, head coach, Mr. Tony Ackerson. Also here tonight, AD Mike Kentz and principal of Seminole High School, Dr. Connie Collins. Congratulations, state runner-ups and state championships uh, uh, individuals, Seminole High School boys swimming. Just one more thing to add, probably the first time you'll ever see anything like this in the boys swimming state championships, number three in the state, Lake Brantley, number two in the state, Seminole High School, and number one in the state, Oviedo High School. Congratulations. Dr. Griffin, uh, school board members, uh, it gives me great pleasure to recognize this evening Miss Mills. Uh, for being selected as the 2018 Adele Graham recipient. The Adele Graham Award, named after former governor's wife, is presented to an individual who is leading the way in volunteer service and community partnership within the state of Florida. To share the words of her Florida Association of Partners and Education colleagues on the Adele Graham Committee that bestowed the award, Missa has established herself as a state leader in community outreach and volunteer management. Missa's ability to network with community partners is unmatched. Within the state, Mrs. is known as the go-to person when it comes to Florida statutes on volunteers and district policies. She was also one of the first district liaisons to share concerns regarding visitors on campus. Missa is a mentor for new district employees statewide. She even holds office hours on Sundays, allowing other districts to reach out to her if needed. Missa has become a favorite speaker at state conferences. Her personality shines as she gets the audience excited about volunteering thinking outside the box and changing the mindset within our school districts on volunteers, community, and business partnerships. In addition to receiving the 2018 Adele Graham Award, Ms. is the first volunteer community manager to be invited to take part in the Florida Department of Education's Leadership Advisory Board. Congratulations, Ms. Mills. With her tonight is her husband, Todd, her two children, Chloe and Holton, and members of our communications team. Congratulations, Ms.
board members, I'd like to introduce our two new administrators for Goldsboro Elementary School. First, I'd like to introduce Chris Mulholland, the new principal of Goldsboro Elementary School. Chris. Chris has worked for Seminole County Public Schools for 15 years, 10 years as a teacher and an instructional coach at English Estates, and five years as the assistant principal at Goldsboro Elementary School. Chris is currently set to offend her doctoral dissertation January 2019. With Chris tonight in attendance um, at the board meeting are husband Michael and daughter Aaron. If you would please stand, Michael and Aaron. All right. Thank you, Chris. And I'd like to introduce the new assistant principal at Goldsboro Elementary, Angela Hooley. Angela is coming from Orange County Public Schools. There she worked as the school-based math and science coach. She then moved into the role of K-5 math program specialist to help develop, design, and train the district in the implementation of research-based math practices. Here with uh, Angela tonight is her husband, Josh Hool. Come on up, Josh. Also joining the Goldsboro team is um, Principal Keaton Schreiner, Mr. Schreiner. Welcome to Seminole County, Angela. Thank you. have to go home and study for their exams. <laughs> Good luck on your exams. Have a great holiday break. Yes, a nice and safe one, please. Do they have two more days? You're all going to miss the best part of the meeting, just saying. <laughs> yeah, they believe you. I tried. <laughs> there is no one left. We have BAB here. We should have Student a BAB government. meeting. Student government. Dr. Griffin, board members, it's my pleasure to introduce Ms. Julie Sioka. Julie is the coordinator of our Magnet School Assistance Pro excuse me, Program Grant and would love to update you on the status of our International Baccalaureate Primary Years Program candidacy as we go um, down that road into establishing our very first IBPYPs. Julie? Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. 
We are so proud to recognize the journey that two of our newest elementary magnets, Ida Wild Elementary Future Ready Academy and Wicklow Elementary Magnet School for Global Pathways as are on as they strive to become authorized by the International Baccalaureate Organization. Please keep in mind that our newest magnet program, Pinecrest Elementary, is not affiliated with the International Baccalaureate Association as their theme is commu computer science immersion built upon the framework of Code to the Future. So why are PYP schools so special? The IB sponsors four programs, the diploma program, which we currently have at Seminole High School and Winter Springs High School, the career program, middle years program, and the primary years program. All programs follow the same mission to develop knowledgeable and caring young people. The PYP program is very exclusive and is currently present in 1,652 schools worldwide. There are only 623 schools in the United States and only 45 authorized PYP schools exist in the state of Florida. What is the Primary Years Program? The Primary Years Program is specifically designed for elementary age learners. It's a transdisciplinary, meaning students investigate key concepts supported and enriched by the traditional subject areas. The IB is committed to making sure that students meet and exceed the state standards. Students who complete the IB PYP at our schools will establish a personal set of values that will lay the foundation for international mindedness to develop and flourish. IB authorization is a two to three year process which schools must prove their ability to provide the infrastructure, skills, and commitment to delivering the rigorous standards required of an IB school. Each of our schools started this process of in January 2018 as they entered what's called the consideration phase. At this point, the schools have submitted the application for candidacy and plan to begin candidacy in early 2019. All staff members on campuses were trained by the IB and are implementing the transdisciplinary framework. This commitment to, from the schools to provide these exceptional opportunities for the entire school community is stellar. We're looking forward to September 30th, 2021, when we can recognize both of these sites as authorized IB World Schools. At this time, we would like to recognize the leadership teams that are present. First, we have Wicklow Elementary School, led by Ms. Martina Herndon and Mr. Carson Stone. And then from Idlewild Elementary, Principal Ms. Lenore Logston, Assistant Principal Dr. Stephanie Wall, and Assistant Principal Keith Erickson. We're so proud of their work and these opportunities that they support for our students to experience the IB framework. Thank you so much. Thank you. Board members, any questions or comments? And thank you, leadership teams, for all the hard work that you're doing. We see it every single day when we walk the halls of your schools. So very proud yes. of you. Let us know how we can help your great work. Thank you. Thanks. Now we have the Business Advisory Board. Good, good evening, Dr. Griffin, uh, Chairman Calderon, and school board members. Uh, it's a pleasure today to uh, introduce to you the Business Advisory Board. We have a number of new members on that we're going to highlight today or tonight. Um, in the past, we have done an annual meeting uh, with the board. Uh, we're doing something a little different now. We're having both a fall and a spring presentation to you all in order to highlight some of the things that we have going on. So this is basically our uh, our fall uh, meeting and introduction to you. Uh, one of the things we've provided you with a handout that has uh, a lot of detail in it. Uh, really the presentation slides we'll put up uh, this evening are kind of the highlights. So you won't see everything in your handout there, but we'll be hitting the highlights. Uh, at this point, I'd like to turn it over to our chairperson for this year, Mr. Sean Essler. Thank you, Jeff. Evening board members, Dr. Griffin. I'd like to introduce a few of our board members who are here this evening. Uh, we have Drew Kloss with FESMA, Manufacturer Rep and Chef, Amy Akmeen, Business Management and Consultant, Ted Cochran, Owner Operator of Kitty Academy, Chris Torsha, President, Torsha Law Firm, Matt Weber, President and CEO of Roar Internet Marketing, and Jennifer Webb with JWAC, right? JWAC, JWAC yeah. Architect and Owner, and myself. Uh, President Zero Edge Unified Systems. 
We have 14 members in total. We come from a number of uh, different diverse backgrounds, small business owners, consultants, and C-level executives. We range from a wide variety of skills, including technology, design, construction, nonprofit management, finance, legal, marketing, and communications. All in all, our board members hold a little over 35 associate's bachelor's and master's degrees, 45 industry-specific certifications, combined over 250 years of experience, and we come from 26 different industries of knowledge, and all this we bring to the board and the school district. Throughout the year, we meet and discuss the various operational and sometimes curriculum-based aspects of the district. Some of these include architectural services, health insurance review, technological innovation, e-pathways, even business development. The purpose of the BAB is to assist, advise the school board and the staff in the operations and management of the school system. We identify and help implement the best business practices and serve as an information conduit between the business and educational communities. One of our methods for advising the district is our deep dive process. And in your package, you'll find a little more information on how that process is worked through. And each year, our team works through two separate deep dives. We split into two separate teams. Recently, we completed two of them. And the first one we want to turn over is to Matt Weber to go through the Great Starts program. Good evening. I can shorten this because I was pretty convinced that everybody was here for this report, so I'll shorten it. <laughs> There is a full report that can be available to you. Uh, the deep dive on the Great Start program took just under 10 months to complete. We examined the current process, and the committee felt very strongly that the program's goals are invaluable to the district and to the community, and that the program should be highly prioritized by the school district. In looking at the current process of the Great Start program, overall, the committee had three general observations. Uh, one, that the program right now relies on the distribution of materials in a way that is very difficult to track, so it's very hard to connect the dots between the effort and the success. The second is that the program's success depends on getting the target audience to a physical location, which is hard to get them out of their homes and travel to a particular place. And third was that information about the program uh, was very difficult to find and often uh, very out of date. Uh, in terms of recommendations, you'll find details in the report, but on a high level, the committee felt there were four valuable recommendations. Uh, one is that the program desperately needs a technology component to it. And right now, the method of delivering the resources th through physical books and hand-to-hand -hand contact is uh, inefficient and probably not matched by the program's resources. Uh, two, we felt that the program could benefit by curating existing content. There are a lot of successful organizations that are already creating this content, and some steps and potentially some expenses could be saved by curating what's already done to benefit the intended audience. Uh, third, we felt strongly that the program could benefit from the development of an app. Uh, we believe that everybody has a mobile phone, the target audience has a mobile phone, and we think the most direct, the most cost-effective way to deliver the intended content is through an app. Uh, fourth, and, and very importantly, we felt that the program could benefit from a technologist's perspective on the strategy and planning team. There's some really wonderfully talented and highly committed people that are, that are planning this, uh, but the component that we felt was missing was how to incorporate technology into the deliverables, and the board uh, also volunteered to start a special committee to help if that's the desire of the, of the board. Thank you. Okay. okay, the next one we're gonna look at is the Longwood rezoning process with Chris Torsha. Good evening, everyone. So rezoning, I know it's a very favorite talk of pretty much everybody. Uh, I've gone through two of these when my uh, years on the BAB, and I can tell you that uh, the days and hours that you all spend doing it, uh, I don't want to have to do. <laughs> but it's an important process, and we looked at it from the policy or from the position of what happened with the new board policy, or specifically with Longwood. So, what came out of that review? The idea was, or what were the initial problems that we thought we saw. First was the surprise nature of the rezoning. It came upon suddenly, and those in the community seemed surprised, and certainly other persons in the staff seemed a bit surprised about, oh, we're gonna have to have a rezoning, let's get on, you know, what are we gonna do about that? How do we go about that process? Certainly for persons who are new to the 
board staff and to the board itself felt a little bit lost in uh, what was supposed to happen. So one of the recommendations that we thought was appropriate would be to have some institutional memory about the rezoning process, develop some internal communications and internal policy uh, procedure that people who are new to the board uh, or new to the district can reference and say, okay, this is what's typically supposed to happen, and not just something that's already in the policy, but some of the, of the more nitty-gritty details, timelines, things along those, uh, those lines. As far as the community, avoiding the surprise in the community, you know, I don't know how exactly how you do that directly because obviously no one ever wants to get rezoned. That's pretty much universal. But some information for the community uh, ahead of time where they can reference on a Seminole County Public School website that says, hey, this is the rezoning process. It may happen while you are here, it may not, but it's a possibility and you should be aware that this could happen. Uh, and to reduce the level of no, I don't want to say fear is the right word, but certainly angst over that whole process. Where is my child going to go? It's a new place. There's some inconvenience involved. There's also a bit of concern about what about the new school? Is it as good as the old school? And the, uh, the opinions in the community were, were driven often by some, uh, a small subset of persons who were greatly concerned about, I didn't want my child to go to this other school who I would, that I perceived as being inferior. Certainly in Seminole County, the school system is excellent. And one of the recommendations that we have is better outreach to the community ahead of time through a variety of different processes, whether it's on the school board website, whether it's having a designated website page that uh, people can go to at any time, not just when there's a rezoning. Uh, articles in newsletter or in newsletters within communities would be a good idea. Precise Clear communication to the community is important. Uh, some of the feedback we got from the uh, committee members themselves were that at the particular meetings, although there was a lot of data presented, it was often incomprehensible. It was using jargon in terms that, uh, in presenting information in a way that uh, made more things more confusing for them rather than alleviated it, uh, presented information in perhaps the best way. So going back to that process, and finding a better way to present the information, a simpler, more direct way to present the information would be appropriate. Establishing a budget for the rezoning process itself, certainly the communications department handles a lot of things on its plate. And this particular rezoning process came to them as a bit of a surprise as well, and so they had to uh, struggle a bit to get their, what they were spending their money on, right? their budget on, in essence. So we recommend that there's a specific budget established for rezoning purposes, whether that means, uh, again, developing web pages, information, outreach, and also even analyzing data that the school may have available already to help identify when a rezoning might be necessary so it's, you can see it farther out in advance and then lay the groundwork again in the community ahead of time. Uh, again, uh, I think I mentioned about creating the reference for the rezoning process itself internally is also an important recommendation. Thank you. And coming up, school board members, we have two deep dives we're going to be starting on in 2019. First one uh, has to deal with the district's ancillary spaces. And for that, I'll turn it over to Jennifer Webb. Thank you. Um, this district has brought to our attention that there are roughly a, ha a half a dozen or a dozen properties that are currently not being directly used for educational purposes. The school board has charged the business advisory board to look into those properties and identify and see if there are any way of repurposing those properties or making recommendations for other uses that could benefit the district. And so it, this is a brand new venture that we've just started. And so right now our next step as noted is just to start talking with top stakeholders to help identify the scope of what we're gonna be pursuing. And then we will report on a regular basis as this progresses. And the next one we're going to be working on next year is the district's cluster zoning process, which I know for a lot of parents is very confusing. You're zoned for multiple schools. How do you determine which one to go to? More importantly, and you know, this goes back to communication, how do you communicate that to the greater public? Not just why you're zoned this way, but how do you go about getting to the right school? If you go to school A, how do you, you know, why are you getting pushed to B? How can you move to a secondary school? So one of the next steps uh, we'll be looking at is getting in touch with the district representatives, holding meetings with them, uh, school administrators who have to deal with this on the front lines, 
uh, and see what information they make available and how readily accessible they are, as well as parents and you know, your customer service base and see what their perceptions are and see how we can better communicate that process or simplify that process in any way. That, is there any questions that we can answer for you at this time on any of those processes? No, but on behalf of the board, we have to say thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Have yes, we ever had absolutely. to codify the investment of your time and talents that you donate to the services, it wouldn't fit in our budget. So we appreciate all your experience and your willingness to share so openly and honestly. So yes. thank you. It's a pleasure thank working you with much. you all. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yes. Yes. Happy holidays. Have a safe sure. one. Captain Francis and everybody. Good evening. Superintendent, Madam Chair, school board members. Uh, wonder, uh, I was asked to kind of uh, have a discussion regarding the Lake Brantley incident. Um, Executive Director Mike Godrow and I met with the staff at Lake Brantley yesterday and we've completed a uh, after action briefing. Uh, present during that meeting was also the Sheriff's Office and Altamont Police Department. I want to provide a little bit of historic um, perspective when it comes to what we've done in Stonewall County Public Schools. We started doing announced drills in 2013-2014 school year. Since then, we've uh, completed approximately 600 announced and unannounced drills without incident. In past unannounced drills, we utilize an unarmed passive intruder scenario to initiate a certain response in the school. Our intentions with these drills is to ensure the school is prepared for the incident effectively and efficiently can operate uh, their emergency response plans, not to create fear or, or anxiety. Although our emergency operation plans are considered confidential and exempt, I wanted to highlight two lessons learned from previous drills that forged some of the county public schools to be proactive in school safety and security, locking classroom doors and our hard panic wires, uh, panic buttons in our schools. These changes were five years ago long before it was in the media or anything like that. Um, Lake Brantley High School conducted their drill without incident. The staff and the students performed well. Let me give you a little time frame of the event. At 1020 hours, we started our unannounced scenario. Luckily, a minute later, there was a rave soft panic activation by staff member. At 10.33, 12 hours later, an all clear was announced over the PA. So our team cleared the school, checking for compliance, doors locked, et cetera, in 12 minutes for a high school setting, very well. At that same time, they started a debrief with the uh, SAFE team at the school and the law enforcement involved with the drill. At 10.44 hours, an all clear was issued through the Ray soft panic button at the direction of law enforcement after the after uh, action briefing. At 11.20, a PA announcement was made over the intercom during lunchtime that used some keywords that uh, caused an incident. Um, that was roughly an hour after the drill had concluded. Unfortunately, the incident has been misreported it's important to note that the incident had a start, the drill had a start time and end time, about an hour difference, and then the other events occurred. Um, some shortcomings that we noted that uh, we are improving upon, one is there's a failure to send out uh, communication to all stakeholders. Sharing of the soft panic message by staff members, multiple. Social media posts by students and subsequent sharing construction noise on the campus, the announcement made over the PA system during lunchtime that students reportedly only heard the keyword code red. And there was a handful of students who used this situation for an inappropriate statement that created uh, fear and anxiety. And we had a news helicopter that decided to do a low hover over our, our open courtyard. Like any other drill, we learn. And here's some things that we are moving forward, you'll see in our drills. We have now an com uh, enhanced communication package with layered backups. Uh, for example, if the school fails to send a message, uh, our district PIO or myself can send those messages. 
We have canned messaging for all lockdowns, so it's universal across the district. The principals will be on site during all drills, and, and I will be in the county for all drills, unannounced. The proper notice will be given on all drills to all stakeholders involved. We need to continue to push uh, our student alerts, for example, through Skyward and School Messenger. Law enforcement supervisor will be on, and has been, but will continue to be on site for all unannounced drills. And we have an enhanced process that we'll roll out in January that has a step-by-step -step process, again, with enhanced secondary and tertiary backups. And we are, have, uh, we've solicited RAVE 18 months ago, and finally those changes will happen hopefully Friday with some changes to that CAN message through RAVE. And I just want to remind the, the superintendent and the school board members that uh, school safety is not convenient. And we are continuing to do what we believe is the right things to do in our schools. Uh, we will, obviously, with this incident, there was lessons learned. Um, unfortunately, they've been associated with the drill, and obviously, um, we're trying to um, rectify those. Any questions for me? Board members? Um, thank Sanchez. you so much. Uh, one question I do have, um, will they be practicing drills with scenarios being in the lunchroom so they know what to do? Yes, the answer to the question is yes. Uh, we have started that campaign last year. Um, actually, Haggerty High School was one of our um, test sites. We worked in some best practices. Every uh, scenario, every restaurant is different. Um, so we, can't, we can give them guidance and give them best practices, but it's gonna be you know, incident-based at that time. You know, we've used a holistic approach when we talk about school safety and security for the last two years, and we want our adults on campus to make adult decisions based on their proximity to the threat and what threat they're facing. Perfect, thank you. Questions or comments? No. Thank you for your leadership. Moving on to our consent agenda, we have a motion and a second. And Ms. Almond, you pulled for O and P for comment. Yes. Um, Madam Chair, typically you assign the board member that lives within the school district zone to serve on RFQ. And if that board member is not available or interested, I would be interested. Ms. Pennick, I do believe that's your zone. Are you available? I'm available and interested, but we'll love to have your support and backup if, okay, that'd be great. if the time comes. Okay, great. Thank you so much for the collaborative work. Um, I asked for 4L to be discussed in that it's an INT, ITN for solid waste, and after consultation with the superintendent, he felt it wasn't necessary for a school board member to sit on this and didn't know what you all felt, if anybody had a burning desire or go with non-attendance, great. And 4N for CM at risk for crooms, I'd like to assign myself to that. Um, 4O for Lyman architect, I'd like to assign Ms. Pennock with the backup of Mrs. Almond. Thank you. And for 4P, uh, CM at risk for Lyman, uh, Mrs. Pennock with Mrs. Almond as a backup to that. So I think we're all serving on committees as of today. So let the fun begin. And we're Q. And Q, I'm sorry, for Stenstrom, um, Christine Krause, Thank if you're you. available. Thank you. Thank you. So at this point in time, um, with the consent agenda, we approve the agenda, but not uh, the consent. Do I hear a motion for I'm approval? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion other than those items that we discussed? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Dr. Griffin, do you have a recommendation for student discipline hearings? I do. Um, my recommendation is that the school board of Seminole County approve the student disciplinary recommendations from November 13th, 2018 and December 4th, 2018. So moved. Second. There's a motion Sorry. and a second. That was loud. Any questions yeah. or discussion? <laughs> yeah. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Uh, Madam Clerk, no public comment forms. If anybody wishes to address the board. Okay, uh, seeing no unfinished or new business, Dr. Griffin, your superintendent's report. There is one item that is a read-only item. Great, so let's move on to our board member committee updates and comments. First up is Mrs. Pennock. Um, I had a v very busy first month, which was, um, 
I had a really great opportunity to speak at the Oviedo SGA. Thank you, Mike, to, uh, for the invitation to get out there in front of those kids, a brilliant group. Um, also got to attend the uh, Millennium Binner Beginner Band presentation. The Lake Brantley, we all got to sign, uh, sign the beam that was going into the new building and that was such a great experience and opportunity to see all of that. Um, also got the opportunity to speak at the Girls Unity Club at um, Rock Lake. If anybody's interested, um, they are always looking for speakers to go out and talk to this group of girls. They also have a SEALs club for boys that are looking for speakers. So um, I encourage you to go out there. It was, it was such a fun opportunity. Um, we attended the history fair at, at Indian Trails, which is really neat to see and such a great experience to attend the Eugene Gregory graduation where they graduated uh, 11, 11 students. Yeah. Yes, great. Thank you so much. Member Sanchez. Um, also a wonderful visit at Lake Brantley and signing this deal was such a great opportunity and taking a tour and visiting our employees and student of the month. Uh, I also enjoyed um, going into the community room and seeing all the incoming freshman parents and watching the moving video. So it was a really nice visit there. And of course, all of us have been going to so many different holiday programs and school visits, and we have seen so many wonderful things taking place, and um, love it. Um, also, we had an opportunity, Miss um, Kraus and Miss Pennick and I, to go to the Florida School Board Association Conference and had a great time learning um, different things with kids' counts and different programs, and um, that was a three-day um, workshop training that we went to. Um, the safety patrol ceremony was fabulous again. Thank you, Captain Francis and your team for doing an excellent job with all of that. Um, the hurricane supply drive, wow, that was amazing. How many did we send up there? Like a semi and a half? A semi and then a, yeah, a semi and a half, exactly right. Right, to the Hurricane Michael um, schools and um, they should have received everything and they're still in our thoughts as many people move on. A lot of people don't realize that they're still struggling and um, we still need to you know, help them as much as possible as well as other families during the holiday season. Um, Business Advisory Board, we had a great uh, meeting. <laughs> it was our celebration, our holiday party. So we really, I don't have anything to uh, discuss about my committee report on that and take stock in children committee report. Um, we are still in need of more mentors, and um, we just received a couple new grants, as well as um, organizing our college and career um, event nights and visits to colleges, so that's coming up. But we're always looking for more mentors, and um, anybody that's interested, they can con contact um, Beth or go online to our Take Stock in Children. We always could use help financially as well too. And then um, cubicle judging, oh my gosh, that was so much fun. The school, the, I mean this building and the creativity that our wonderful employees have is just fabulous. And um, we enjoyed taking a tour and all the different um, creative jobs that they did for the holiday. So. On that note, um, and then our condolences you, to you, um, Dr. Griffin, and to your family um, for the loss of your father. Thank you. Um, you're in our thoughts and prayers, and so is your family. And then um, tomorrow, looking forward to our mental health um, training and first aid training. And happy holidays to everybody. Have a safe and happy one. Member Kraus. Well, thank you. It's been a busy month for me, too. Um, I love the safety patrol graduation. Those little kids were, uh, they were really sparkling, proud to be up on stage. Um, I was invited to the Seminole Chamber for Good Morning Seminole, um, as well as Mrs. Pennock and some other new um, recently elected candidates. And we got to just get to know some of the local chamber members and that was a really warm welcome and I was grateful for that. Um, I toured jo Journeys Academy 
as well as attended the graduation at um, Eugene Gregory, and that was my first graduation on the other side of the stage. And it was so moving. Um, one student couldn't be there, so his mom came to accept. And we were all in tears. It was awesome. Um, we toured Idlewild Elementary, the IB program there. Um, the Teacher of the Year Luncheon was hosted this, this past week. Um, Leadership Academy, this, the community leadership, we did the State of Middle Schools where we toured um, Tuscola Middle School and learned about all the creative ways those kids are learning. It's amazing. Um, Tuscola also hosted this program called Living on My Own where kids were, the seventh and eighth graders were given a backpack with a, a listing of a job, whether or not they're married, do they have kids, and they had to go to 10 different stations, um, a, a home station or an apartment station, insurance, automobile, food and groceries, daycare, diapers, charity, um, and they had to budget their money. They literally wrote in like a check register. I would advocate this program for every middle school. Probably some of us adults too, but it was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what the kids learned is it's, it costs a lot of money and kids are expensive. <laughs> they wanted one, I had one, one boy, first he started with, um, he wanted the Lexus car, which was like $700 a month rent, um, lease. And he had, he had an infant. And then he decided, oh, I'll just get a bicycle. <laughs> I'm like, how's that going to work going to daycare? But it was a great program. I highly recommend it. Um, we also attended this seminal delegation meeting this morning, this morning. And, um, and that was very informative. And I wish all of you a great holiday. I'm looking forward to having all my kids home, and I hope you get to enjoy all of your families. Thank you. Vice Chairman Almond. Thank you. So I attended Seminole State College's capstone projects presentation recently, uh, Bachelor of Science in Business and Information Management, and they take local business and they give them a real world problem, uh, which is typically social media related and communication related. They had Rock and Brews in Oviedo, and they had Amaya Papaya, uh, both very interesting. Amaya Papaya is a very small company, and they do uh, very fine-tuned child play. And then uh, Rock and Brews, their biggest issue was they sold way more food than alcohol, and so the profit ratio was kind of backwards. So that was interesting to learn. Um, Children's Cabinet had Devro present this past month, and they talked about they have a mobile health care unit that they take out into communities, a crisis unit. And they also made a presentation on self-care and the importance of self-care for people who deal with uh, fatigue or serious situations all the time. You can have compassion fatigue. They also shared uh, through Safe Kids and Seminole County Sheriff's Office, they offer these tags. One is you wear the badge when you're driving so you remember your child in the back seat. And unfortunately, we do see things in the media about that. The are the ones about swimming. And even though you have a lot of people, maybe when you're having a, a little pool party or gathering, you always want to designate at least one person to literally watch each of the children. Very, very important. I went to Casperi Rotary Student Essay Contest. They had students from Casperi Elementary and from um, South Seminole Middle School. And it's really incredible how these students are so talented and so articulate with what they write. And they wrote about leadership, and it was really great. Um, ditto on what you all said. And, <laughs> and Captain Francis, um, really a shout out to you and to the Sheriff's Office. Um, you always keep us safe to the best of your abilities. You keep us informed and you're a great partner. And thank you for that. And Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to everyone. Thank you. Well, to at least one person in the room, they might know what these numbers mean. When I say 41 to 14, does anybody oh, know? Oh, no. the Gators. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, there's someone really? who's wearing a very special outfit. I'd like to call up Gosh. Captain Francis. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Godrow, could you give him your reindeer? At least he can have something garnet and gold. Uh, <laughs> 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 a 
Okay, we were doing a lot of serious stuff, so now we can go back. <laughs> <laughs> um, this afternoon when we had our work session, a lot was talked about the arts, but this time of year, I have to give a special shout out to all of our fine arts teachers and leadership. They are offering concerts and plays, and I was lucky enough when we had our tour of Oviedo High School earlier today, the music teacher told me what night they were singing at Candlelight at Epcot, so I put it in my calendar and I got to experience it. And I'll tell you, I was sitting next to people from other states and like a proud mother duckling, you mm -hmm. know, I was like, those are our students. And they were like, they were phenomenal. They were blown away that they were high school students that were singing so professionally. And I just think our students represent us so well, whether it's our crewmies on student government, or it's our fine arts or our athletic teams that we recognize this evening. We are just really blessed in this mm -hmm. community by phenomenal teachers, parents, and students. Um, got to participate in our Croom senior portfolio interviews. Didn't have any of you, unfortunately, but if you ever have the chance, it will be the highlight of your year to interview these phenomenally talented students. For a Crooms Academy student to graduate, as you know, Mrs. Cross, you have a son who graduated from Crooms. They must go through a formal interview and create a portfolio and, and sit down with business leaders. And, and they are, I put them against any college graduate that I've ever interviewed in my life. So hats off to the leadership at Crooms. I see our Dr. Hanshaw, the principal, and we appreciate all that you do for us. Just, I know each year we have to do ethics training. I know we love to do that. This year I had the opportunity to take the training from Brian Applegate, the attorney at the county commission. And when you s take this training year after year after year, if you ever want to have a different instructor, I highly recommend it. He makes it entertaining, but you always learn new tidbits. So it's open to the public every year when they do the training. So if you'd like to, I, I'd highly recommend it. I sent you all emails with the live video, well not live anymore, taped videos of all the keynote speakers at the 2018 National Summit on Education Reform that I attended in DC on a scholarship. The keynote speakers were phenomenal. I know some of you have listened to some of it, but maybe over the holidays, if you have the chance, I think there could be some good open discussions for us in the future as we look in deeper dives into our community. Um, attended a lot of the school visits that you all did. Um, one shout out for CFHLA. They had their annual Seminole County Tourism Awards Luncheon and they had each of the hoteliers bring in donations for our Finn family. So our social workers were there and our Finn team and they carried all those great um, food back to our students. Got to participate in the Seminole State College graduation. It's a little bit different than our high school graduation, but shout out to Seminole State. They graduated over 2,000 students fall semester, so it was exciting for me to sit there and actually recognize some of the students as some of the Seminole County Public School students and parents, too. And with a lot of the certifications, a lot of our parents go back for training, so it was a wonderful experience, and I'm so grateful for the partnerships we have through both of our institutions. And um, as far as the Orlando Science Center board meeting, we have great news to share because I think our students and teachers will be the recipient of it. They just received a grant that we are gonna have the international traveling exhibit on Pompeii in two years. They're only going to a few cities worldwide and we were chosen as one of the cities to be hosted at the Science Center. So I'm hopeful that through our curriculum writing, we'll be able to um, put in some maybe visits for our students that are studying on that subject. But Dr. Griffin, any further comments? Happy holidays, everybody. Seeing none, happy holidays, everyone. Team, take time for your family and yourselves to refresh. Thank you for all you do for Best our community. To relax. Happy holidays. This meeting stands happy adjourned. Happy holidays. Where'd the kids clap? Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I forgot to. I might even have a cocktail.